Hey there. This is the final video for this diorama that I've created. It's a replica of a building in the town that I live in. And um, it's 132 scale made just from cardboard, XPS foam, and some coffee stirrers. And that's basically it. There's a fair few videos. I'll leave links for the ones that were leading up to this one. And there will be a follow-up video from this because I want to make a really nice wooden base for this and siding and give it a really nice clean professional look so it'll be a beautiful display piece. So I hope you get something out of this one and I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to start doing detail by uh, creating the chimneys and using visual references from actual photographs and historical photographs of the fire station. I'm just going to use a little it's a sliver of a, a coffee stirrer. It's the right uh, width that I want between bricks. So instead of using a ruler, which is a bit clunky and, and big for a job like this, I'll just lay it down and then just keep ruling in between. And it's, uh, yeah, an easy way to measure without measuring. Once I've done the first lot of lines, I'm able then to just lay this down every second section and then just lay it on both sides with a pencil and then it saves me doing it every single time. It's once again just sort of uh, creating something in double time by cutting corners. I'm just going to round the corners of the chimneys just a little bit to take that very sharp edge away because it doesn't look aged and it doesn't really look like brick if it's very very sharp just soften a little bit and then quickly draw in each individual brick I didn't uh, use anything to rough this brickwork up either because it was painted on the building a few times so it had that sort of clean look about it so I left them quite clean. Uh, we'll give them a little bath with some stain just to give it that depth of colour behind so the paint that I put on top won't be overly bright and new looking. Just drain them and dry them and they're ready to start adding the paint. This is so much quicker than using a paintbrush and it gets in every little nook and cranny so uh, it works well. And just a very heavy brush, it's not even a dry brush, it's so heavy. These bricks are going to end up being quite a, a white sort of yellow. Eh, it's a mishmash of colours layered on. <laughs> I wasn't exactly sure because the building has been painted and changed over the uh, the decades and centuries. Just this sort of a cream colour and then I did put a little yellow on and this one I um, forgot that it was actually just a plain brick one so I redid it and I will stain that later so it doesn't look quite so new. I cut a little sliver out of it so I could slot it onto this bit of cardboard because I know this chimney from the photographs sits very flush almost in the uh, top of that sort of um, facade on the building and I'll glue that down and these little uh, terracotta, well they're supposed to be like terracotta bits in the top of the chimney, terracotta pipes I suppose you call them, I just uh, got a bit of dowel sharpened it with a pencil so I can insert it because I don't like just gluing stuff down I like to assemble pieces inside each other if I can and I just cut it with a, a knife stained it and painted it that terracotta color and then made a hole as close as I could to the center and then enlarged it and inserted the little pipe just to ensure that it you know will never be knocked and falling out or it's just it's going to be there forever nice and strong and neat and that's the chimneys ready to go I made a hole in the roof for both or both of the ones on this side of the roof and a hole in the bottom of the actual foam chimney as well 
and when I glue it down it will be inserted with glue inside and um, that'll never come off either just nice and strong to make sure everything is just permanently adhered it'll last longer than I ever will that's uh, what I'm counting on I've kept a template for the front door and the back door when I uh, cut this all out of cardboard to make the walls I hung on to the doors so I w knew they would be fairly close it's got uh, a little bit of trim on the inside so it's smaller but it allows me to get the shape correct without having to muck around too much I initially used this bit of um, cheap sort of thin plywood because it was so strong and I wanted to make the door strong because I, um, it, the door needs to come on and off for this piece and um, I marked it out and spent quite a lot of time cutting it and um, I uh, cut the top of it, the arch at the top and when I did that it just broke into many little pieces so I had to redo it uh, with balsa wood I, uh, I don't know why it shattered quite as badly as it did but I did learn to cut the arc or the arch at the top first so when I've got that angle I've found the other one when I cut it last it's why it just seemed to splinter and shatter into pieces so I guess I learned something from it but uh, it was it was a pretty rotten job to do with a knife I, I definitely need better tools when doing something like this again I've used a bit of plastic just for the stained glass and I used the door that I cut out as a template so I'd get the uh, the size of the window correct with the little squares that are the individual little pieces of glass so that way I could mark them out and then draw them in with the paint pens I prefer to rule with little tools like this so I can see what I'm doing a big ruler will block your vision a lot of the time and it can be awkward to see what you're doing plus the rulers tend to stick to things and pick them up with just a little bit of um, almost like suction it grabs onto objects when you're ruling with them when the objects are very very small I did this twice with these pens just to make sure that um, I got them nice and as even as possible they're not the greatest pens in the world but they they did the job well enough and just some little bits of coffee stirrers thinly sliced to do the little trim on the windows after I give it a stain I'm gonna give it a, a coat of green and then lay the glass in and sort of assemble it a little piece at a time I try to uh, assemble as much as possible but I can't always do everything it's the way I work I, I don't know I do a way that's um, as easy as possible for myself it's like assembling a kit but I paint each piece first And I've just got the uh, last little pieces here that I will just mark and cut and then very carefully super glue and lay them all in so it looks like they're all little individual windows which is they almost are but you know the little piece going down the front there is like a handle so the door can be pulled on and off and then I can slot these little pieces underneath and they look like they're all just one big door just going to paint up the uh, concrete I'm just sporadically dabbing uh, just a, a grey no particular type of grey but it's quite a dry brush with a very big brush so it, it's intentionally making no pattern of any kind it's very easy even with a paintbrush to accidentally go making patterns on things which will make them look unnatural so I sort of twist the brush around as I'm doing it to keep avoiding making patterns and then it comes out nice and uh, very much like concrete I 
I'm going to use a slightly lighter one. It's, this is another grey. It looks like white in comparison to the one underneath, but it's definitely grey. And I'm just going to closer. I, sh I know I should have done this before the building was put down, but I had to keep adjusting the level of the ground because it was such a difficult angle and it was a first time sort of project for me doing that. So uh, I had to keep playing with it and raising the ground and then repainting and so here I am repainting the back for the last time. I'm using my fingers just to pick the paint up and down. I'm not smearing it, I'm just picking it up and down to just lighten it and make it uh, more realistic. The lines, well the, the breaks in the concrete in each slab, I just drew them in with some soft waxy pencils. I've done this on other projects and it really is very effective, it looks great. I just use the black and I draw a line straight down and this is the shadow is the first one and then after you've drawn in a shadow you just get a cream coloured one. I wouldn't use white, I would use a cream and uh, you're drawing in a highlight so you're just putting in light and shadow and that makes what will appear like a three-dimensional little dip in the concrete. I do this sort of drawing on a lot of things that I make because it's just such an excellent illusion and it's so easy to, which is the great thing about it. As you can see that's quite effective and it breaks up the uh, the concrete as one big piece as well, it really makes it into nice little slabs of it makes it look far more real. Any little inconsistencies in the ground you can take advantage of those by just adding a little darkness or even highlights with pencils again. I'm just running along the edge of a little bit of a, a raised area on this and I'm going to allow it to look like there's shadow coming from it. And you just move lighter and lighter away. I mean this is a feather touch that I'm doing. Little cracks. You just move away lighter and lighter and it dissipates and becomes a shadow. These little plants I used on Trevor's trailer, the video that I did um, a long time ago. It's just a giant ugly bush that I bought at a cheap shop. But I just break the, the leaves up into little individual pieces and they work really well to make all different kinds of plants. And I got enough to make a thousand dioramas out of one lump of plastic bush that I bought. This is meant to be what's a choco vine running along the fence and the beauty was I accidentally uh, glued this fence upside down it's all uneven up the top so uh, I can disguise that now with a bush that's actually meant to be there from back in I don't know the 1920s or something like that. I'm going to super glue them down. Um, you go using super glue like this on a project this way and you've got a foam base like I do be careful it doesn't go running all the way down because it will dissolve the foam like acid. One drop of glue would make quite a large hole in your work. So just be cautious. I just kept laying these along down to the middle of the fence where I uh, had a longer piece just coming out of the ground so it looked like it was the vine coming up and then it was running all along the top of the front section of the fence. I didn't do anything else to them, I just glued them on, they look quite good. And there's just some downpipes, which is just some green coffee stirrers sliced in half. This really neatens the project, which I really appreciate, I like it very much. And these sort of superficial pieces that are parts of the downpipe, I mean they, they're like, you know, veneers on a bad smile. <laughs> they they really tidy everything up and disguise quite a lot plus they add detail which is beautiful and some color again you can see that it's very superficial but when you've got it glued on and the glue's dry and it's just sitting there neatly it really is part of the building and not just a little bit of a a wooden stick painted green it doesn't have to be a complicated thing to look really good. That much I do know from scratch building, it's surprising what you can do. I'll give you another view of it. It's, I mean, I'm tidying up this fairly untidy corner. And it looks so much nicer, really neat. Yeah, I just, 
I enjoy doing these parts of the projects. And I'm going to start dirtying it up as I do in pretty much all my videos. So I'm not going to do a great deal of this um, for the video. But uh, this is what I do with everything. And I'm just adding shadow, adding dirt, adding grime, adding age. All the things that uh, happen naturally. And it tidies things up in a way that I can also darken things to disguise them. So, you know, if you want to hide something, you, you, you darken it. So anything that's, you know, messy paintwork or something might be a little bit wonky, you know, you put a, put a heavy shadow on it. It uh, does wonders to draw the eye away from that because the eye seems to seek out lighter things when you're looking at them and doesn't sort of look for dark corners. make a shadow under around everything on the ground going up the walls on the concrete also looks like moisture which is nice as it dries uh, it dissipates in color it's uh, very subtle you have to add multiple layers depending on how dark you want it once again as you can see me doing this I'm adding a shadow it helps tie everything together, anchors everything in to one big piece. And it doesn't really matter where light's coming from when you're displaying something like this because if you're kind of putting shadows everywhere, it, uh, it does the work for you with your, um, you know, your visual experience of looking at it. I think uh, my work would probably look a bit a bit crummy without this sort of shadowing technique that I do. It really does disguise a multitude of mistakes. I'm not ashamed to admit that I make a terrible amount of mistakes, but um, it's always about, you know, dealing with them, disguising them, knowing how to fix them. That's what I really enjoy about doing this. It's, you know, endlessly troubleshooting and, and solving problems which is half the fun of doing this and this is it finished and I will be making a base in a follow-up video and it should look far better and I'll probably tidy this up a little bit as well because I'm sure I'll see a million little issues with it that I'm unhappy with in between but for how it looks now I'm pleased with it, it it's quite a lovely little build and it does look like the original building I hope you got something out of all of this and I hope to see you next time.